there is a fifth dimension beyond that which is known to man. It is a dimension as vast as space and as timeless as infinity. It is the middle ground between light and shadow, between science and superstition, and it lies between the pit of man's fears and the summit of his knowledge. This is the dimension of imagination. It is an area which we call the Twilight Zone. Maple Street, USA, late summer. A tree-lined little world of front porch gliders, hopscotch, the laughter of children, and the bell of an ice cream vendor. At the sound of the roar and the flash of light, it will be precisely 6.43 p.m. on Maple Street. What was that? A meteor? <laughs> That's what it looked like. I didn't hear any crash, though, did you? I didn't hear anything except a roar. Steve? What was that? Guess it was a meteor, honey. Came awfully close, didn't it? Too close for my money. Much too close. Maple Street, 6.44 p.m. on a late September evening. Maple Street in the last calm and reflective moments before the monsters came. At 32 Maple, Paul Mathers replaces a light bulb on his front porch, but when he goes to turn it on, no light pours forth. At the other end of Maple, number 75, one of the local kids earning their pocket money is cutting the grass when it gives up the ghost for good. And at one Maple, Miss Ellen Cosgrove tries to place a call for her friend Wendy to inform her of the latest gossip, but no connection can be made. Operator? Operator! Something's wrong on the phone. Operator! Steve, the power's off. I had the soup on the stove and the stove just stopped working. Same thing over here! I can't get anybody on the phone Please, either. The phone seems problem. to be dead. I had the Uncle through the backyard. The See if the power's still on Floral Street. No, no, I'll be right back. Good thinking, Pete. Doesn't make sense. Why should the power go off all of a sudden? And the phone line. Maybe some sort of electrical storm or something. That don't seem likely. The sky's just as blue as anything. Not a cloud. No lightning. No thunder. No nothing. How could it be a storm? I can't get a thing on the radio. Not even the portable. Well, why don't you go down town and check with the police? Though, they'll probably think we're crazy or something. A little power failure and right away we get all flustered and everything. It isn't just the power failure, Charlie. If it was, we'd still be able to get a broadcast on the portable. I'll run downtown. We'll get this all straightened out. <laughs> I don't understand it. It was working fine before. Out of gas? I just had it filled up. What's it mean? It's just as if... as if everything had stopped. Steve, we better walk downtown. The two of us can go, Charlie. The car, though, is the damnedest thing. It couldn't be the meteor. A meteor couldn't do this. I don't know. What is going on? I don't like Let's go, Steve. Bit. Mr. Brand, you better not. Why not, Tommy? They don't want you to. Who doesn't want us to? Them. <laughs> Who are them, kiddo? Whoever was in that thing that came by overhead. What? Whoever was in that thing that came over. I don't think they want us to leave here. What do you mean? What are you talking about? They don't want us to leave. That's why they shut everything off. What makes you say that? Whatever gave you that idea? <laughs> Now isn't that the craziest thing you ever heard? It's always that way in every story I've ever read about a ship landing from outer space. From outer space, yet. <sighs> Sally, you better get that boy of yours up to bed. He's been reading too many comic books or seeing too many movies or something. Tommy, 
Come over here and stop that kind of talk. Go ahead, Tommy. We'll be right back, and you'll see. That wasn't any ship or anything like it. That was just a, a meteor or something. Likely it's not. No doubt it did have something to do with all this power failure and the rest of it. Meteors can do some crazy things. Like sunspots. Sure, that's the kind of thing. Like sunspots. They race came with radio reception all over the world. And this thing being so close, well, there's no telling what sort of stuff it can do. Go ahead, Charlie. You and Steve go into town and see if that isn't what's causing it all. Mr. Brand! Mr. Brand, wait. Please don't leave here. You might not even be able to get to town. It was that way in the story. Nobody could leave. Nobody except... Except who? Except the people they'd sent down ahead of them. They looked just like humans. And it wasn't until the ship landed that... The... Tommy, please, son, honey, don't talk that way. That kid shouldn't talk that way. And we shouldn't stand here listening to him. Why? This is the craziest thing I ever heard of. The kid tells us a comic book plot, and here we stand listening. Go ahead, Tommy. What kind of story was this? What about the people that they sent out ahead? That was the way they prepared things for the landing. They sent four people. A mother and a father and two kids who looked just like humans, but they weren't. Well, I guess what we'd better do then is to run a check on the neighborhood and see which ones of us are really human. <laughs> <laughs> there must be something better to do than standing around making bum jokes about it. I wonder if Floral Street's got the same deal we got. Where is Pete Van Horn anyway? Didn't he get back yet? Can you get it started, Les? No dice. <laughs> He got his car started. How come his car just up and started like that? All by itself. He wasn't anywhere near it. It started all by itself. And he never did come out to look at that thing that flew overhead. He wasn't even interested. Why? Why didn't he come out with the rest of us to look? He always was an oddball. Him and his whole family. Real oddball. What do you say we ask him? Yeah. Yes, let's go. Ask him. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let's not be a mob. I don't understand. I swear I don't understand. What's happening? Maybe you better tell us. Nothing's working on this street. Nothing. No lights, no power, no radio. Nothing except one car. Yours. Wait a minute now. You keep your distance, all of you. So I've got a car that starts by itself. Well, that's a freak thing, I admit it. But does that make me some kind of criminal or something? I don't know why the car works, it just does. We're all on a monster kick, Wes. Seems that the general impression holds that maybe one family isn't what we think they are. Monsters from outer space or something. They're different from us. Fifth columnist from the vast beyond. <laughs> you know anybody that might fit that description around here on Maple Street? What is this? A gag or something? This a practical joke or something? <laughs> Now I suppose that's supposed to incriminate me. The light goes on and off. That really does it, doesn't it? I just don't understand this. Look, you all know me. We've lived here for five years right in this house. We're no different than any of the rest of you. We're no different at all, really. This whole thing is just weird. Well, if that's the case, Les Goodman, explain why. Explain what? Look, let's forget- Go that. ahead, let her talk. What about it? Explain what? Well, sometimes I go to bed late at night. A couple of times... A couple of times I'd come out on the porch and I'd see Mr. Goodman here in the wee hours of the morning standing out in front of his house looking up at the sky. That's right. Looking up at the sky as if... as if he were waiting for something. As if he were looking for something. You know, really, this is for laughs. <laughs> you know what I'm guilty of? <laughs> I'm guilty of insomnia! Now what's the penalty for insomnia? <sighs> Did you hear what I said? I said it was insomnia. 
I said it was insomnia. You fools. You scared, frightened rabbits. You, you're sick people. Do you know that? You're sick people. All of you. And you don't even know what you're starting because, let me tell you, let me tell you, this thing you're starting, that should frighten you. As God is my witness, you're letting something start here, begin here, that's a nightmare. On Maple Street, as the night darkens and suspicions grow, who really is the monster? The cheesecake made you greedy, but your aching head and stomach hear this message from old Speedy. Alka seltzer, plop, plop, fizz, fizz. Oh, what a relief it is. Plop, plop, fizz, fizz. Oh, what a relief it is. Ah, those speedy Alka seltzer bubbles burst into action to relieve your upset stomach and aching head fast. It was only as directed. Oh, what a relief it is. What a relief. We now return to Maple Street, where strange occurrences are afoot. At 16 Maple, the Goodman House, Mrs. Goodman pours a glass of milk, lights a candle, and joins her husband Les on the porch. The excitement of a few minutes before has dissipated, each neighbor returning to their respective homes, but still on their guard. Against who, though? Or better yet, against what? It just doesn't seem right, though, keeping watch on them. Why? He was right when he said he was one of our neighbors. Why, I've known Ethel Goodman ever since they moved in. We've been good friends. That don't prove a thing. Any guy who'd spent his time looking up at the sky early in the morning, well, there's something wrong with that kind of person. There's something that ain't legitimate. Maybe under normal circumstances we could let it go by, but these aren't normal circumstances. Why, look at the street. Nothing but candles. It's like going back to the Dark Ages or something. Just stay right where you are, Steve. We don't want any trouble. But this time, if anybody sets foot on my porch, that's what they're going to get. Trouble. Look, Wes. I've already explained to you people. I don't sleep very well at night. Sometimes... I get up, and I take a walk, and I look up at the sky. I look at the stars. That's exactly what he does. Why this whole thing? It's its some kind of madness or something. That's exactly what it is. Some kind of madness. You best watch who you're seen with, Steve. Until we get this all straightened out, you ain't exactly above suspicion yourself. Or you, Charlie. Or any of us, it seems. From age eight on up. What I'd like to know is, what are we going to do? Just stand around here all night? There's nothing else we can do. One of them will tip their hand. They got to. There's something you can do, Charlie. You could go home and keep your mouth shut. You could quit strutting around like a self-appointed hanging judge and just climb into bed and forget it. You sound real anxious to have that happen, Steve. I think we better keep our eye on you, too. I think everything might as well come out now. Your wife's done plenty of talking, Steve, about how odd you are. Go ahead, tell us what she said. Go ahead. What's my wife said? Let's get it all out. Let's pick out every idiosyncrasy of every single man, woman, and child on the street. And then we might as well set up some kind of kangaroo club. How about a firing squad at dawn, Charlie, so we can get rid of all the suspects? Narrow them down. Make it easier for you. There's no need getting so upset, Steve. It's just that, uh, well, Myra talked about how there's been plenty of nights you spend hours down in your basement working on some kind of radio or something. Well, none of us have ever seen that radio. Go ahead, Steve. What kind of radio set you working on? I never seen it. Neither has anyone else. Who you talk to on that radio set? And who talks to you? I'm surprised at you, Charlie. How come you're so dense all of a sudden? Who I talk to? I talk to monsters from outer space. I talk to three-headed green men who fly over here and whoop- Steve! Steve, please! It's just a ham radio set, that's all. I bought him a book on it myself. It's just a ham radio set. A lot of people have them. I can show it to you. It's right down in the basement. Show them nothing. If they want to look inside our house, 
let them get a search. Look, buddy, you can't afford to- Charlie, don't tell me what I can afford. And stop telling me who's dangerous and who isn't, and who's safe and who's a menace. And you're with them too. All of you. You're standing here all set to crucify. All set to find a scapegoat. All desperate to point some kind of a finger at a neighbor. Well, now look, friends. The only thing that's going to happen is that we'll eat each other up alive. That's not the only thing that can happen to us. Who is that? I can't see. Mom, stop grabbing me. It's the monster! It's the monster! Oh! We may need this. Put the gun down. Shotgun? Come to this. Good lord! Will anybody think a thought around here? Will you people wise up? What good would a shotgun do against- No more talk, Steve! You're gonna talk us into the grave. You'd let what's ever out there walk right over us. Wouldn't you, huh? Well, some of us won't. Give me that gun. Ugh! Oh! Pete Van Horn. Pete Van Horn? He was just going over to the next block to see if the power was you on. You killed him, Charlie. You shot him dead. But... But I didn't know who he was. I certainly didn't know who he was. He comes walking out of the darkness. How am I supposed to know who he was? Steve. Steve, you know why I shot. How was I supposed to know he wasn't a monster or something? We're all scared of the same thing. I, I was just trying to, trying to protect my home. That's all. Look, all of you. That's all I was trying to do. I, I didn't know it was somebody we knew. I, I didn't know. Charlie. Charlie. The lights just went on in your house. Why did the lights just go on? What about it, Charlie? How come you're the only one with lights on now? That's what I'd like to know. You were so quick to kill, Charlie. And you were so quick to tell us who we had to be careful of. Well, maybe you had to kill. Maybe Peter there was trying to tell us something. Well, maybe he found out something and came back to tell us who there was amongst us we should watch out no. for. No, it's nothing of the sort. I, I don't know why the lights are on. I swear I don't. Somebody's pulling a gag or something. A gag? A gag? Charlie, there's a dead man on the sidewalk, and you killed him. Does this thing look like a gag to you? Mom, I'm scared. <laughs> Get him. Get off of me. Get away. Take that, mister. What? Now you're trying to stone me? I'm bleeding, can't you see? Look, look, I swear to you, it, it, it isn't me. But I do know who it is. I swear to you, I do know who it is. I know who the monster is here. I know who it is that doesn't belong. I swear to you, I know. Who is it, Charlie? Charlie, let's hear it. It's, it's... What are you waiting for? Go ahead, Charlie, tell us. It's, it's the kid. It's Tommy. He's the it one. It can't be Tommy. He's just a boy. It has to be Charlie. He right shot now. the gun. That's crazy. That's, that's crazy. He's a little boy. But he knew. He was the only one who knew. He told us all about it. Well, how did he know? How could he have known? This is crazy. Make that kid answer. Insane. I'm not putting up with it anymore. Tommy, make him This is crazy. Come back and What about explain? Goodman's car? It was Charlie who killed Van Horn. But it was the kid here who knew what was going to happen all the time. He was the one who knew. Have you all gone crazy? Stop! Hey! Shut up! Get him! Get him! He's Charlie getting has to be stop the one. Stop it! Everybody Get just him. stop yeah, it! it together. Come on. Where's my rifle? Les Goodman's the one. His car started. Let's wreck What it. about Steve's radio? He's the one that called them. Smash the radio. Give me Van Horn's hammer. Give me something. Stop. Stop. Where's the kid? Get Let's Steve. get him. Get Charlie. They're working together. Tommy? Run! Get him! Get him! He's getting Tommy? Hit. Tommy? Get him! Make the kid answer. Wait. Look at that. The lights. They're... They're going on and off. 
It isn't my boy. It's it's Bob Weaver's house. It isn't Bob Weaver's house. It's Don Martin's place. Tell you, it's the kid. It's Charlie. He's the one. Understand, understand the procedure, the procedure now. now. Just stop, Just stop a few of their machines and radios and telephones and lawnmowers. Throw them, Throw them into darkness, darkness for a few hours, hours and then you just sit back, back and watch, and watch the, pattern. the pattern. And this pattern, and the pattern is always, always, always the same? same? With, few With few variations. They pick they the, most the most dangerous enemy, enemy they can, they can find, find, and it's, and it's themselves. themselves. And all we, and all need, we need to do is sit back and watch. Then I take it this place, this Maple Street, is not unique? By no means. Their world is full of Maple Streets. And we'll go from one to the other and let them destroy themselves. One to the other. One to the other. One to the other. <laughs> The tools of conquest do not necessarily come with bombs and explosions and fallout. There are weapons that are simply thoughts, attitudes, prejudices, to be found only in the minds of men. For the record, prejudices can kill, and suspicion can destroy, and a thoughtless, frightened search for a scapegoat has a fallout all of its own for the children and the children yet unborn. And the pity of it is that these things cannot be confined to the Twilight Zone.